zero. Hello, my friends from everywhere in the world. Thank you very much for coming for another Dev Nation Tech Talks on Friday. This is all Java related. And today we have two very special guests. We have here my friends from Denmark and Italy. So Klaus and Andrea is going, are, are going to present us with the greatest and latest features of Camel 3. So uh, Klaus and Andrea, uh, the stage is yours. Hello, everybody. Uh, so here's Klaus. Andrea? Hey, hello. I'm Andrea. Let's discover Camel. OK, so I am getting started. So I'll start sharing my screen. And we have the set of slides ready for you guys and also some live demos. So be prepared. Uh, I am a software engineer from Red Hat. I've been working a long time on Camel, so just threw in some contact details for me uh, if you want to reach out to me. And Andrea? Yeah, hello, I'm Andrea. I'm senior software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm actually the BMC chair of the Apache Camel project, and you can find me online, and I'm based in Italy. Thank you, Klaus. OK, so let's get going. Um, so we'll start with uh, what's Camel, and then uh, Andrea will you know, talk all about uh, Camel 3 and the products and the releases. And then we go in uh, focus on, on Camel K, Quarkus, and Kafka connectors. Uh, just before, uh, we do have time at the end for Q&A. So any questions you may have, so please do just type them in the chat so we have them ready for us at the end. So OK, so let's roll. So what's Camel? Well, it's the Swiss knife of integration. Well, it's actually a giant Swiss knife, um, and it has a lot of functionality. <laughs> OK. Well, it's a Java-based integration framework. Uh, it's based on integration patterns. It comes with 300 components. So you know, it's a lot of connectivity. And it comes with, uh, you define how systems are integrated in DSL in routes. You can program them in Java and XML. And yes, it can integrate everything, or almost everything. It runs on popular Java runtimes, Spring Boot, Quarkus, uh, Vertex, Kafka, Tomcat, and whatnot. So everything under the sun, basically. And it has an awesome community, uh, probably the biggest open source integration community there is. Uh, we have many contributors. Uh, Camel was actually created before GitHub, so the graph you see on the bottom is the activity of commits on the product and you know it's just keeps growing and uh, we have a lot of uh, pull requests from external contributors and we love that it's a very welcome community okay so just a few camel basics so as i said you use camel routes how to define where how systems are integrated so where you take some data from in, from one system and you send it to another system. So these are the basic ones, just the straight from system to another system, so from file to GMS. And this is the same in Camel. You can code in Java in the top or XML in the bottom. At runtime, it becomes the same model inside Camel. OK. And Camel itself, uh, the high level picture of Camel is that in the center, we have Camel context. That is actually the runtime camels. So the idea is that you have a camel context, then you can add your camel routes to them, where you can you know specify how routes are integrated, how systems are integrated, and you can use enterprise patterns for that and do methods transformation, routing, splitting, aggregating, and so on. And on the bottom we have co components which you can use to connect to different systems. You know there's 300 components, so there's everything under the sun. Okay, so let's start with just a very basic camel example. It's just camel. It's just a standalone camel. There's no other runtimes. So we have a public static void main class. Then we create a camel context. Now this is camel, just using the new constructor, no magic there. Then you can add routes to it. And to keep uh, the source on a single slide, we use an uh, anonymous uh, inline route builder. And inside there, we can define how this route is the system is integrated, and in this, this is a hello world, so we just say a timer and a log. And then we start camel, and the start operation is a non blocking, so just beware, so we just sleep for 10 seconds and we stop it. But this is just to throw in a slide showing that there's no magic, there's no curtain, you know, see everything under the sun is just standalone library you can run in Java. 
a proper way of also running camel is with Spring Boot. So in Spring Boot land, you just create a camel route, and you can use your Spring Boot annotations, uh, auto wired and so on, and have dependency injection and everything that is just standard Spring. And of course, you can also do with Quarkus, and Quarkus is uh, very simple. You may or may not use these uh, dependency injection at all, so just create a route. Or if you use dependency injection, then in Quarkus you can also use CDI. So these are CDI uh, annotations with application scope and inject and so on. But Quarkus does also support the Spring uh, dependency injection, so you could also use Spring annotation if you want. Okay, that was just a quick uh, basics of Camel. Now Andreas will take the floor and give you a rundown about the Camel 3 project. Thanks, Klaus. So uh, when we start working on Camel 3, uh, we wanted to create uh, an ecosystem around the main project. So as base project, we are always we have always the Camel Camel project, so the Swiss knife of integration, and uh, the Camel Spring Boot, as we already seen in the last slide, and uh, Camel Caraf uh, related to OSGI. So if you love OSGI, is your choice. And uh, uh, camel K. So camel K is camel for the for the clouds for the cloud for the cloud. So uh, Kubernetes and Kinetic and uh, camel Quarkus. So this is the choice for Java and fast Java and you know fast startup time. And uh, the last added project to the family. So camel Kafka connector, which is related to Kafka Connect. Uh, framework, and we will see this later in uh, in the slides. Uh, about the releases uh, uh, for Camel 3, we choose to have the same approach as uh, Java actually do. So we will have two long-term support release during the year, and the first one will be the 3.4 that is about to ship, so we will release June and uh, the other one will be uh, 3.7 and uh, it should be in December and uh, after that we will use only Java 11 and maybe Java 14. So yeah back to Klaus. Thank you very much Andrea. So what I'm gonna give you a talk about now is very interesting it's about Camel K, um, really awesome product. So what is uh, Camel K? Well, it's a library integration platform based on Camel, born on Kubernetes with serverless superpowers. So awesome. So basically, Camel K allowed to run Camel integration on just standard Kubernetes, but you can also run it on OpenShift, and you get the best of power if you have a Knative power cluster. So if you have a Knative installed on Kubernetes, but Camel K can run without Knative. And this is what we're gonna see in the demo today just playing on vanilla Kubernetes. So, but what about how you do this? So the idea and the principle of Camel K is that developers just don't want to deal with runtime so much. And they just want to you know, write some integration logic or some code and just let the platform figure out how to run that. So that is the basic idea of Camel K. So we can write a SQL file with your integration route and on the slide is, you know, something from Telegram, doing some method transformation, sending to a Kafka, and then taking the same message from the Kafka and calling it to be so, you know. You have everything under the sun with Camel, with the enterprise patterns and the connectors and so on. And then you just want to run it. So there is a command line tool with Camel. It's a Camel with a K. The Camel run and then the name of the file. This one is a Groovy source code. Then, you know, it sends to the cloud and the cloud runs it. And when I say cloud, it's just Kubernetes. So it can be running on your laptop. It can be something you have on, on premise at your at your company, or it can be in a public cloud, whatever. Doesn't really matter so much. It just runs there. So the high level architect of Camel K is like this. So on one side, we have your developer environment where you can sit and write your code and whatnot. And then with the tool, you can do updates uh, into the cluster on the cloud side. It does say it's remote cloud on, on the slide, but it doesn't have to be remote as said it can also be running locally, which we're gonna see in the demo. But on inside the cloud there's the magic is happening. The magic is two pieces. 
there's a camera K operator. This is sort of like an agent that figures out what to do. And these operators is watching a set of custom resource definition, CRD. A custom resource definition is a way, a standard way in Kubernetes to allow Kubernetes to be extended so you can install custom resources. So what we've done is to create an integration custom resource in a camel integration. And then every time a integration custom resource is installed in the cluster or update or whatnot, the operator reacts. Then the operator is figuring out what to do. So it's figuring out, okay, this is what you want to do. This is your source code. Okay, you want to use this command, common component, and that one, and this one. And then it figures out how to do that and build a container if that's needed and run it. And it can do that really fast. So that's what we're going to see in the demo now. So before I go to a uh, live demo, just want to say on the top we have uh, editor, a standard sublime editor, no, Java editor, a terminal in the middle, and then on the bottom you have a watch. We keep watching the parts in Kubernetes so you can see the activities going on. So we're going to switch to uh, the terminal. So here I, I am. So here I am saying, version. You can see this is a, a nightly build. It's a fairly new nightly build. What I have to say is that Camel K is about to do a 1.0 release. So what's the space in next week or the following week, we will have a Camel 1.0 release. And there's also an upcoming webinar on July 9th where Nicola and Luca, you know, great engineers that work on Camel K, is going to give you a tech talk about Camel K. So I suggest to you know, watch this one as well. But let's get started. So camel in it. So camel is allows to create a new integration just from the command line. I'm creating a Java file. And then I can open that Java file in my editor. And this is the up here. It gives me a sample route from the beginning. So it's a from a timer and then log info. So I can just run this one. But before I run it, I just say, Change this so it's a hey, hey, that's Danish for hi. And then I can say camel run, the name of the file. But now I want to run it in dev mode, slash, so slash dev. So that means the, it will, you know, update itself if I change the source code. But now you can see it's already running. So hey, I from camel K. And we can see in the activity log, here is a container started with foo. So if I go up here and change the source code, oops they buy camel K and I save now, then you know camel K in instantly updating the the application. And you can see now it says buy camel K from Java. So that is really, really fast. And let's do some other changes. So instead of doing a log, I say I just want to do log body. So it's nicer. I save the file. And now it runs that one. Um, oops, it's a mirror. Okay, turning. So what is this is actually on purpose, but you know, this is a camel expression that I mistyped. I forgot the ending parenthesis on body, Mrs. Body. So I save the file, and it will just um, redeploy and run it again. And hopefully it should be running. And we see now it started by camel K from Java. And of course, if I make a, a compiler error, and now I forgot the semicolon, and it's updating and it's now we get a Java compiler about a missing semicolon. So we get, you know, also the code errors. And let's just do something else is to send that message to, uh, oh, instead of doing a lock, let's do a two stream out. So what I'm going to do now is to send that message to a, a, a camera component that's called stream. And now you can see it being, this is stream, so it's like system out instead. So that's really, really fast. Uh, also, a, a, a trick is to, you can configure some of your editors to save on low focus loss, which are done on subline editors. So I can just, you know, switch immediately from, from the editor to the terminal, it will auto save the file. And also I can, you know, change other things in camera so I can make it go faster, uh, one, two, three. And it goes really fast. Um, so that's really awesome. But that's just uh, one thing. Now I'm going to stop that one. Now I'm going to say something. Don't 
I'm going to run the same example, but now I'm turning on a trait called Quarkus Enable True. And now it's running that same integration in Quarkus mode. So if I take camel get, uh, it says foo is running. So I can say camel log foo. And if I go up in the start, I should see it's powered by Quarkus now. So basically I can choose that at runtime, I want to run camel in pop, yeah, standalone maven class like public static void main. Or if I want to use the awesome framework of Quarkus to run my Camel K application, I can just enable a trait. And this is something that we are working on to make it a default. So Quarkus will be default in a future Camel release, but currently it's not. But this is really, really fun fast. Um, one more thing is that Camel K is not only um, Java. I can also use other languages. And if I go here to Firefox, if we go to the Camel K uh, on GitHub, there's a number of examples you can find. And these are for different languages and YAML, JavaScript, Groovy, Kotlin, and so on. And there's a simple JavaScript language here. So let's just try to run this one. And I want to run it from, from GitHub. So I can click the raw button. So I actually just get the raw soft code. And I can say Camel run and the link for that one and it will run this one and i can also lock that and now we have camel k running in javascript so this this is javascript it's not java code um so there's no semicolon and so on okay so that was really really awesome so now i'm going to stop this one and let's as again there's a webinar on july 9th where we will be much more in depth about Tom K from Nicola and Luca. I'm not going to steal all their thunder. Again, just to highlight in the slides that you know you can use many different languages with Camel K. Groovy, Kotlin, and JavaScript are still somewhat experimental. Groovy is you know fairly stable, so that's uh, I think the JavaScript is only related to JavaScript engine in Java itself becoming you know removed from Java 11 and so on. So that's a bit more uncertain. But Groovy and Kotlin are let's say more than experimental none. And moving on to Quarkus and Camel. So in Java, especially on in the cloud or on containers, then Java has been known for being slow. And especially around its density problem. There are two problems. One is slowness and density problem, because on the traditional on a cloud system, you can compact and run a lot more Go applications and node and whatnot. But Java itself were too fat big and whatnot and of course that was built for a different time you know it's 25 years old it was built as this big monolithic process to keep running on on you know, bare metal uh, application servers and so on but on the cloud it's different so even if you take uh, one of the most modern traditional cloud native java stacks and run them they are still hundreds of megabytes so that's one problem and the other really problem with java is that it takes time to start up uh, you know, become warm and, and ready, and also to to shut down itself because uh, it was, again it was built for a different time. So in the cloud, we want to be able to react much more on demand. So quick scale up, quick scale down, and also very important to scale to zero, because um, then we can you know orchestrate our workloads much better if we only runs when we need it. And also if you are you know running on a public cloud where you have to pay by usage, then you don't want to, you know, just paying for idle processes. So these two problems is becoming super important in, in the cloud and also in the server space. So this is what Quarkus uh, is aiming to achieve and, and help with. So Quarkus is, has a tagline called supersonic subatomic Java. Basically, that means this is very, very small in the sense because uh, a Quarkus is the smallest piece in, in an atomic. And it's, you know, it's a Kubernetes native Java stack. So they make Kubernetes first class and also native compilation first class from, from this stack. And it's using, you know, instead of creating everything from, from the scratch, they are using, you know, best of uh, existing Java libraries out there. Uh, so Camel is one of them, CDI and Spring and many other great things, Hibernate and so on. And Box makes uh, here is from their website. 
you know, Quarkus can minimize really the memory and uh, also be very fast on the first response time. And I'm not going to dwell so much in that. I just want to say that in, in Quarkus, you can run in two modes, in JVM mode and native compile mode. JVM mode is the blue one and native compile is the green one on this screen. So here's a screen where I have, you know, native compile, the Java application, the camel, and it starts up in 1.0. Uh, 16 milliseconds and takes up 28 megabyte of memory, total memory. Okay, so let's go to the Quarkus demo. Um, on the figure here, this is my favorite camel. This is a Lego camel, and Lego is from my home country in Denmark. So, but let's go for the demos. And again, I'm being really, really adventurous and go for live. So a quick way to get started with Quarkus is to go to the website and start coding, and then you can you know pick up your dependencies and you know and what we're going to do. So what I've done is to pick up a set of dependencies already: the camel, infiltrate with the HTTP server from Quarkus, and then I want to have metrics and help. So I already did this one and clicked the blue button. And if I go to my code editor, I unzip that one and I can open that in the code editor. And by default, I get this REST service from Quarkus slash hello slash I can res hello. But I create a camel route, uh, added the CDI annotation, so discovered by Quarkus. And then I say from platform HTTP slash camel slash hello, camel runs, and Quarkus is very awesome. And then it shows the host name. So I can actually try this and I can type from the terminal, Maven compile Quarkus dev. That means you are starting up the application in using a Maven plugin from Quarkus that runs in developer mode, kind of like slash slash dev in camel K. So now it runs, and if I go to a web browser and go on localhost 8080, I see the standard page from Quarkus, and I change the fonts to be very big. That's why it looks like that. And if I say hello, this is a hello from Quarkus. If I say camel hello, I get the camel is uh, camel and Quarkus is very awesome. And I can, of course, do like in Camel. It's super very awesome. I'll save the file and if I go back, then, you know, it should have, you know, updated that one. I can see it's super very awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's really good, Klaus. But, you know, let's do something more. And I can stop this one and kill that one. So what I've done is to pre-build this example. And you can run it in um, as a Java jar. Uh, my camel and run a jar. So now it runs in as a single fat jar. It's run in 2.2 seconds. And I have here a little script that can show you how much memory that takes. This is, um, nope, sorry, wrong script. My camel takes 157, a little low because it includes the script itself. So 150 or so megabytes for this one. Just get that one. And it's the same one. I can uh, say I also got help checked, by the way. So everything is up. This is Camel and Quarkus together. And I get metrics. I can see, you know, my metrics. Total number of Camel message process one. So if I go on look close to 8080, Camel hello, and call it a couple of times, then this counter here should go up. Yes, seven. And you can, you know, plug them into Prometheus and you can get a nice visual graph and whatnot. So that's not what I want to show you guys. This is, you know, just want to show you. You can also run it in um, in native compile mode. So this is a binary that has been pre-compiled by myself and starts up in 2.2 seconds. The same applications and let's see how much memory that one takes. So that's 30 megabytes, a little less to script. Okay, that's really awesome. but. What I have done as well is to create a script called run many. This is just the last thing I want to demo is that I run this script. I run 100 instances of that application using different port numbers from 8000 to 8100. And we are up and running. And oops, sorry. If I go and see how much memory that takes, that takes 2.8 gigabytes of memory because that's 100 instances. Okay. So if I go to the web browser, I can call all of them, 8080, let's say 8022, camel hello, 23, so everyone is there, let's take one more, 77, okay, that's fine Klaus, but 
now I'm gonna kill all of them. He killed my camel. And they should damn, sorry. Uh they should be dead now. So now so just wanna show you quickly if I run them again, I can get a response really really fast, you know. I was not so that is really really awesome with Procracy so far. So let me just kill that one and we can continue with the slides and go back to the presentation. And don't be afraid if you thought it was too fast, then we have a video on YouTube so it's more slow, we can watch that later. So now I'll give it the word to Andrea. He will talk all about Camel Kafka Connector. Thanks, Klaus. So Camel Kafka Connector is the uh, latest project in the ecosystem, the Camel ecosystem. And uh, it's based on uh, Apache Kafka and Apache Camel, obviously. And uh, quickly, Kafka, Kafka is a distributed streaming platform and uh, also a, a published subscribed messaging broker. We we are focusing much more on the Kafka Connect framework in this case, which is one of the part of the of the components of Apache Kafka, and is a framework that helps the user to integrate Kafka with the other system, external systems. So with Kafka Connect, you are able to create connectors to ingest data in Kafka and stream this data out of Kafka to external system. And the, these connectors are pluggable, so you can use a available one or also create your own custom connector with multiple features and like the automatic offset management, for example. Um, okay, so uh, what is a Camel Kafka connector? Is a, a Kafka connector built on, on top of Apache Camel, and uh, the idea is to reuse what we already have uh, as components. Uh, as auto-generated connectors. And actually, this is a sub-project in Apache Gamel, and it was donated by Red Hat in December uh, uh, 2019. And you have the list of avail available connectors on the Camel website. OK. Uh, Oops, sorry, next. that's a bill in the slide. Yeah. Okay, so let's see a quick demo based on uh, Kafka Connect standalone. Uh, we will use the, the AWS S3 source connector and the AWS SQS sync connector. So we will load the file on a specific bucket and uh, this file will, uh, will be a source you know, to Kafka. And after that, the, the message in Kafka will be consumed and sent with the sync connector to the SQS queue. Okay, uh, what we want to stress with the Camel Kafka connector is that uh, uh, we would like to have an approach with no code. So, or at least less code as possible. So basically you should be able to run connectors only through a configuration file. And okay, we will see this through the, through the video. Okay, uh, in this case, we will use the plugin path approach. So in the configuration of the, of Kafka, I already set a plugin path, uh, property. In this case, it's playground connectors. I already downloaded the connectors from Maven Central, the S3 and the SQS1, uh, and actually I'm unzipping them. So unzip the first one and the second one. Okay, we have all set, so we have the, the folder for both, uh, and uh, actually we, we, we are all set. In the Kafka connector demo, I have the configuration file for them, so the S3 connector configuration has inside the class uh, for the source connector, implementing the source connector, uh, some converter for key and value, uh, some properties about the polling duration of the consumer, the topic at which we are pointing, and the, the, the endpoint and the credential for AWS. The same for the SQS connector. In this case, we have a sync connector, so a class uh, implementing a sync connector interface. Again, the, the queue name and the credential, the AWS credential. I, I want to upload the hello message txt uh, that contain hello from Kafka Connector. 
we will see this. Uh, actually, I have only to run the, the the Kafka cluster with only one node in this case because it's standalone. And um, okay, all is running, and we just need to to run the the two connectors. So we will use the connect standalone uh, executable and uh, the connect standalone properties, and we are passing the real properties with the real credential to uh, to Kafka Connect framework. Okay, the connectors are already running. Uh, we will see there are two camel contexts running, uh, one for the first route and one for the second one. So source and sync. Now we should be able to, to upload the file to the S3 bucket. The S3 bucket is called camel Kafka connector. Here, so. yes. in the recording, I was forgetting to say that. Now we will upload the hello message txt. The file, the file is there. Since we have the delete after read through as default, this will be will disappear because it will be deleted after uh, the consumer. And uh, in the camel one. Q, we should see the message hello from Camel Kafka connector coming from the Kafka topic. Okay, this is just a little example of what we have, and uh, uh, actually we have more than 300 uh, com connectors generated from the components. Get back to Klaus. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Andrea. Uh, now we are almost time for Q&A, so just want to again stress out there's a new talk on July 9th about Camel K from you know, its creators, Luca and Nicola. So really, you know, I really highly recommend to sign up for that one. Uh, here's some links for more information. We have posted the videos on YouTube, so you can find them there. And there's also a much longer video with uh, using a different Kafka connector. I think it's uh, Slack, among others. And yeah. you can also go and look at the examples. Um, so take a look at that. So questions. So let's go for that. I will yes. stop. Well, awesome presentation. Uh, we're almost out of time, but I have two questions for you. First one, uh, first one is, do we have any plans for Python support in Camel 3? Um, that's a good question. So Python support in Camel 3, so I assume it's still Camel is still a Java-based uh, framework, so it will not rewrite Camel in, in in new language. But there used to be a way of calling, you know, the other language scripting language in in Java using the JavaScript API. But that is becoming, you know, deprecated and removed in in Java itself. So that will have to go through some sort of third-party support. Uh, at the moment, there's not. But you know, if there's becoming more demand for it, then reach out to us in the community, and we will look at what uh, alternatives we can come up with and install that one. And maybe the first step is to get it in uh, part of Camel K. Awesome. And the last one is that, is there any plans to uh, include Camel K as the primary runtime we fuse online? That's a product question for Red Hat, but I will say yes. Absolutely. Oh, please go ahead. No, yes, it's, a, it's a something for the product, but yes, it should be. Okay. That's good to know. And again, Klaus, Andrea, thank you very much for this awesome presentation. I'm pretty sure the, the attendees were amazed about the new feature of Alchemic 3. And um, I hope everybody stays safe and see you on the next DevNation Tech Talks on Fridays. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.